G'day guys, it's Trevor James here from James Saddlery. We're here today with Glenn Gardner. Now Glenn's a, a, a horse expert, been involved with horses his whole, whole life. Where were you actually born, Glenn? Yeah, g'day Trevor. Look, uh, mate, I was born in uh, Alice Springs. Uh, so that was a while ago. So, uh, but my family moved around a fair bit. So we had properties in southeast Queensland uh, for a long while there. And uh, we ran cattle and also we bred horses. Now you were involved with the military for a fair while as well. I think you acquired quite a bit of rank in the military. I, yeah, I joined the army after uh, I, I was working on, uh, on the family property and also did some work on some other cattle stations. And then I took the soft option and joined the army. So uh, I spent almost 20 years in the Australian army. Part of my career in there as well I, I was lucky enough to command a ceremonial unit in the Australian Army and we would do things like obviously your Anzac Day parades but uh, we would also do events uh, at uh, like the Royal Brisbane Show and then we'd have tent pegging competitions with the uh, Queensland Mounted Police. Uh, we'd also do other ceremonial events. Uh, escorts for either the Governor General or the Queensland General, uh, yeah. gov uh, Governor I should say, yeah, and that was uh, back in the uh, in the 90s into uh, up into the mid 90s before I resigned my commission uh, in the Army and then uh, retired. Now yeah, Glenn this led to an interest in the military saddles which you have uh, recreated as well and we've been selling those fairly well, well here in uh, Brisbane for the year uh, military troops, reenactment groups? Yeah, it's very, very hard to actually acquire uh, original military saddles. And they, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on them to bring them back. And some of the originals that, you know, you're a little bit reluctant to actually use them on horses because now they're well and truly over 100 years old. So um, we run a business up in Indonesia and uh, which is a, uh, a business and uh, risk management consulting company. But while we're up there, I was able to actually get some suppliers uh, to actually make the saddle arches, the, uh, the cast iron arches, and also get some uh, woodworkers to make for me your saddle runner boards. So I, w I got all of the metal work uh, actually uh, sourced to be able to do that and all of those specifications are to I think it's the 1913 Artificers Handbook um, that was uh, issued by the, uh, the British uh, military for the Commonwealth Forces and all the leather uh, I, uh, I acquire actually through you Trevor yeah. and uh, we, uh, we build the saddles to the original specifications as outlined in the Artisifer's Handbook. Now, Glenn, I, um, amongst your other skills, you do beautiful hand carving, some of the best I've ever seen in the world, actually. Yeah, I was, I was fairly lucky, I guess. As a kid, um, you know, growing up, uh, I, I learnt how to repair saddles because we were in a fairly remote area, so if you broke something, you know, the only person around there to fix it was yourself. And then I took an interest in doing uh, carving work. So, and this is around the same time that I first started getting involved with horses. So I started riding horses when I was about eight or nine and then started um, training horses and starting them off uh, when I was about 12. So, and from that period, I was lucky enough to meet up with some pretty experienced horsemen. And they kind of took me aside and, you know, a lot of young fellas, you know, back in that time, you know, there was a lot of macho involved and it was, you know, considered, well, if you could stick a bucking horse, you were a bit of a champion. But as one old guy actually said to me, he says, any fool can make a horse buck. He says, if you can learn how to work with a horse and, you know, embrace him as, as your mate and vice versa, he's going to work out a lot better. And that's kind of the philosophy that I've retained since I was a, a, um, a young child uh, all through my equestrian career. Now, Glenn, you, you've got horses up in Indonesia to this day. 
Yes, mate. I uh, I have uh, uh, some horses up there of my own. Plus, I also help other people train their horses as well. Now, you've sold quite a few of our saddles up there to your fellow riders and friends up there. And uh, if anyone up in Indonesia wants advice with their horses or saddle fit or anything to do with horses at all, they contact us and we'll put you in touch with Glenn immediately. Yeah, look, uh, Trevor, always happy to uh, help uh, uh, anyone with respects to uh, just being exposed to perhaps a different option all right, of working with their horse. You know, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people don't realise that there's only three, three real reasons a horse will give you grief. It's either pain, fear or disrespect. So it's a matter of um, working with the horse so that um, you can get a solution that you know the horse will respect you and will appreciate that. Now Glenn's on Instagram. Yes, that's right. If you look at um, hashtag Glenn Gardner Leather, uh, you'll be able to find more contact details there. And probably the other social media as well. Uh, yeah, that's the primary one that yeah, we'll okay. be able to look at. And then if, if anyone's also interested, they can contact me through you, Trevor. All right, mate. Hey, that's been a, a great afternoon talking to you and uh, enjoy the rest of your holiday here in Brisbane. Hey, thanks for your time, Trevor. You guys have a great day. All right, mate. Mate, thank you.